bestow upon us his blessed mercy, his grace and wisdom now and ever into the age of all ages. Amen. Today is the third Sunday of the blessed month of Thule. And uh, I'm sure this uh, story is very familiar to all of us, especially from a, a young age. Um, and many of us already know the, the background, but just to give um, a little more detail, um, you know, the city that this took place in, as we read in the first verse, was where? Jericho, right? And we know this, what, the history of what happened to the city of Jericho in the Old Testament with Joshua and, and the Israelites. And uh, some historians say there was maybe three different cities of Jericho around in the same area throughout the history of time. But it's believed to be one of the oldest cities uh, in the world. Uh, and um, despite that, it was also known to be a sinful city that was abandoned by God in the Old Testament, as, as we just explained. Um, it's also a city that was actually has one of the lowest or the lowest elevations um, on, on the planet. And so um, it is a low or a short city with a short man, right? Or someone who has a short stature or not um, falling short of the glory of God, as St. Paul says, right? So um, despite the fact that he tried very hard to be successful and he had much money, as um, St. Luke des describes. Um, and even though he had uh, money, maybe the way he, he received it was not honest. And that's why, as you know, the reputation was, was, was very uh, negative, so much that um, the, the Jews were known to pay with exact change because they considered any money from the tax collector to be unclean. Um, even on top of that, um, the temple refused to accept any tithes or donations from these tax collectors because of, of what they did. <clears throat> um, and similarly, the church does not generally accept any donations from people who are um, receiving this money in a dishonest or ungodly way. Um, so the idea here was not only was he short in stature, but also in status. Um, he didn't, probably had probably no friends um, uh, or followers or, or likes or, or the like. Yet, um, even his name, though, means pure, <laughs> which is kind of ironic. We don't know if his um, dealings beforehand, um, maybe he was pure, maybe he was honest um, compared to, but to have that, like he, so there were publicans, there were tax collectors, and then he was a chief tax collector. So he had a very high rank, um, uh, despite the fact that he was short. Um, and so the idea here is that despite everything that he did and everything he accomplished in the worldly uh, ranks um, and all the money he collected, um, he had many enemies. And he was lost. Um, but the good news is that the Lord Jesus Christ said, I have come to seek and to save that which was lost. Um, <clears throat> and sometimes, maybe a lot of the time, we also personally feel lost, even when things are not going our way, or um, even if we attend and the church often, or we pray often, um, and or even if we attain our worldly goals, financial goals, our academic goals, we still feel that there is something missing. And Zacchaeus felt that there was something or someone missing. And we don't know the details of what happened before, but who had a similar story to Zacchaeus today? It's also mentioned in the gospel. It's also mentioned uh, or read on uh, one of the Sundays uh, during the, the Coptic calendar. Hmm? Uh, the prodigal son, that was a parable that the Lord Jesus Christ gave, and it was not necessarily a real life story, but there was also a publican um, or tax collector who was sitting at the tax office, and the Lord called him St. Matthew, right, or, or Levi. <clears throat> and um, we don't know if these two interacted. He was his bigger boss, but the cities were different. Um, maybe even St. Matthew was there at the time when the Lord 
um, spoke to Zacchaeus. Most likely he was. Um, <clears throat> so this is just contemplation, but maybe he heard about what happened with the, the how the Lord um, called Matthew and he left his position and um, he even celebrated with him um, so much that the people were, were um, accusing the Lord of being a friend of tax collectors and sinners, which he is. That's actually the theme of, of this month. Um, and so the, the truth of the matter is that when we feel um, abandoned or we feel lost or we feel short um, in, in attaining the, the glory or the mercy of God, that's what the Lord wants us to feel. Because once we get to that point, then we start searching. Um, and even though God is the one who is searching for us, the Lord says, draw near to God and he will draw near to, to you. Or St. James says this in his epistle. Um, so God wants us to seek him so he can find us. So we're, we're basically seeking to be found by the Lord, but he wants us to take the first step and then he'll take the, 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 thousand, the next thousand steps. Um, <clears throat> and it's actually very similar to the gospel of last Sunday that the young ruler who asked what he needed to do to inherit eternal life. He, his intentions might not have been 100% pure, just like Zacchaeus, but the Lord worked with what he had. And instead of showing him judgment and accusation and bitterness and hatred like everyone else, he showed him love and mercy and compassion. And he said, today, I have to stay. I have to stay at your house. Just like he went to the Samaritan woman and said, I have to pass through Samaria. Just like he says to all of us, I am knocking on the door of your heart. I have to seek and to save you, but you need to take the first step. <clears throat> and so um, this, this is the beauty of our loving Lord, <clears throat> who um, despite what we do, despite our shortcomings, his great and immense love overshadows all of that. And then we desire him even more. <clears throat> and so... Um, Many people said that uh, if you personally were the only person on earth, right, um, the Lord still would have come and took our form and died on your behalf. And that's the beauty of the loving Lord. When we feel that this is a personal and powerful relationship with our Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> so what are some things that we have to do um, in order to maintain this? Because even though we seek and we, and we find him or we're found by him, we still sometimes forget or we see, still sometimes um, lose our way and get lost. Um, so, well, what did Zacchaeus do? What was the first thing that he did? He tried, right? He, he, he tried, but he couldn't because he was short and there's a big crowd. So what is the first thing he did before climbing up the tree? He ran ahead. So that's, that's not um, a detail to be overlooked. So the idea here is we have to plan ahead to get a blessing. We have to wake up early to go to church so we can get the blessing. We have to um, make time to hear the word of God um, daily in our lives and to speak to him um, daily. So um, we have to sit with ourselves before we enter um, the, the confession, right? These, this, these preparations are integral for our um, interaction with the Savior. Um, because when we do this, it's, it's a sign that we're, we're taking this seriously as best as we can. Um, then he climbed up, right? Um, and uh, this is also the fathers described this as just the lifting our mind before um, we pray or lifting our eyes and our heart or climbing the cross as a lot of the fathers explain. Um, and uh, St. Augustine actually says, I mean, the sight is kind of funny, which is why it, it's ingrained in a lot of our minds, um, a grown adult man who is rich and, and powerful, climbing a tree, doing something that um, the children do, right? Um, but St. Augustine says, don't be ashamed. He says, um, let us climb the sycamore tree and see Jesus. The reason you can't see Jesus is that you're ashamed to climb the sycamore tree. What, what is the sycamore tree in your life that you're ashamed to do? What is the act um, that you feel is below, beneath you 
or, or for children and not for you in, in your spiritual life. That thing we have to do. Um, even if it's behind closed doors, okay. But what if it can't be? Um, so here he says, let Zacchaeus grasp the sycamore tree and let the humble person climb to the cross. So here's the example of the sycamore tree is the cross. This might be another reason why the church placed this gospel um, shortly before or after the Feast of the Cross. Um, he says, that is little enough merely to climb it. We must not be ashamed of the cross of Christ, but we must fix it on our foreheads uh, where the seat of shame is. <clears throat> so the cross is our power. The cross is our weapon. The cross is our salvation. Um, and uh, like St. Paul says, there's, there's a lot of other people who think the cross is foolishness. But to us, it is the power and the wisdom of God. Um, so the Lord said to Zacchaeus, today I must stay at your house. Even though the world hates you, I have to come to you. Even though everyone is calling you a sinner, and you might be, um, everyone else is as well. We all shall short, fall short of the glory of God. We all have sinned. Um, <clears throat> but I still have to come to you and reveal my glory to you and make you holy as I am holy. Um, and so the Lord doesn't deal with us as others. Um, he doesn't criticize us sharply, even though he has every right to, but he wants us to criticize ourselves. Um, and he wants us to seek him. Um, but this overwhelming grace and this super generous gift um, is, is given to him even before he asked. Like in the gospel, does it say that Zacchaeus asked, Lord, have mercy? No. Did he ask for forgiveness? Uh, no, it was given to him even before he asked. Um, and um, But all he did was he showed that he was interested. He showed that he was curious. He ran ahead and climbed up just to see, just to find Christ. Um, and so in our daily lives, God wants us to do this. What is the effort that you're going to do to, to just find him in your daily life? God does takes that very seriously. He doesn't overlook it. You might overlook it, but he doesn't. Um, <clears throat> um, and uh, like St. Augustine says, all of us are lost. All, all were lost from the moment that the one, the first man, Adam, sinned. Um, the whole race was lost. But one man who was without sin came, and he was the one who would seek and save uh, them from sin. So, God seeks us. What is the question that that God asked Adam after he ate? Simple question. Well, what did Adam do after he ate? He hid. So God is saying, where are you? Right? He told Adam, where are you? He's also telling us, where are you? Um, not like every day of our life, he's saying, where are you today? I, I want to be with you. I want to, to see you. I want to interact with you. I want to share um, my love with you. <clears throat> so even, even in the book of Ezekiel, the Lord God says, I will seek what is lost and bring back what was driven away. I will bind up the broken and strengthen what was sick. So the God want, wants to seek us, not to punish up us, but to, to heal us and to redeem us and to unite with us. Um, and when we imagine that, even in the depth of our sin, we're not going to run away from him. We're going to run to him. That's what he wants. Um, <clears throat> so um, the last point is that we are so precious in the eyes of the Lord. Um, like uh, the Lord gives the example, you know, of the five sparrows that are sold for two copper coins, and not one of them is forgotten before God, right? So it's basically like buy four, get one free. That one that is free, God cares about, right? That is us. Right, the one. Um, so, uh, just a one nice example that I read. Um, uh, one of the Orthodox priests was writing about um, a gold mine, one of the biggest gold mines in, in America a while ago. Um, so, when you mine for gold, there's a very painstaking process. Um, in order to uh, first, you have to travel very. Um, they they travel about five thousand feet below ground, about a mile deep, to bring out the ore. Um, and later it's crushed and refined. Um, but great care is taken to make sure that nothing is lost, right? Um, because it's very precious, right? Um, so the workers put on very special clothing um, before they leave home. Um, 
before they leave home from work, they have to disrobe of this and take a shower um, so that uh, all of the particles are saved um, and the clothes are washed as well every time after work. Um, and then they collect the water and they filter it to find the tiny particles of gold that that were lost in the, the clothing or, or the skin of, of the worker. And this is um, not wasted because, um, well, this, the book that I read from is years old, but they said um, in one year they gather more than $40,000, probably it's double today, um, worth of that gold dust. Right? So even though the worker doesn't see anything, what he's doing, he's focusing on the big pieces, um, there's still fine um, things that apparently are lost, but then they're collected again. So we are not lost in the eyes of God. God considers us, if we're not this you know, great piece of shiny metal like the saints, we're still valuable in his eyes. And he comes to seek and to save even the tiniest um, of us, even the shortest of us, like we think. Um, <clears throat> and he's the one who calls near those who are far away. Like Zacchaeus went up the tree, but Christ came to him. He knew Christ was going to come. Um, and so uh, no matter how many people are Christian, God is still looking for everyone to be saved. Um, no, no matter how full this church is, there's still the, the one lost sheep who we have to go and seek after. Um, <clears throat> and so um, the Lord tells us, make haste and come down. That's the next step. So after we make, take the first step and Christ comes to us, he says, okay, now I need you to be fixed. Number one, you have to humble yourself, right? Um, you have to forsake the things that are of uh, secondary importance. When did the Lord say to Zacchaeus, um, today's salvation has come to this house? Did he say it after he come, came down the tree? Or did he say it when he met him? When did he actually say it? What did Zacchaeus do or say before? Anyone know? So let's go back to the timeline. So first, Zacchaeus runs ahead. Um, he climbs up the tree. The Lord passes by, and he says, the Lord says, today I must stay at your house. And what were the other people saying? Uh, he's going to go and and uh, be a, a guest with someone who is a sinner. So Zacchaeus is like, wait a second. Like, um, I don't want you to change your mind. I don't really care about what the people say, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give half of my goods to the poor, and if I was taken anything by false accusation, um, I restore for, fourfold, right? So he's trying to repent. Um, he's telling the Lord, this is my plan for repentance. I'm taking this very seriously. And then the Lord said, today salvation has come to this house. Um, so just climbing up the tree is not enough. We have to make a change. We have to make a plan to, to reveal to the Lord our desire to be with him forever. When we desire to be with him, that means things have to change. We have to change a little bit um, or a lot um, or a lot a lot of the time. Usually that's what happens with our repentance. It's not a minor change because the deeper we go into ourselves, the more we realize things need to be fixed. Um, <clears throat> so um, we ask the Lord to grant us salvation and we hope to hear the, the, the words of the word today. Salvation has come to this house because he is the one who seeks and saves all of us who are lost and glory be to him now and from to the age of age. Blessed are they.